Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's like he was just putting the pieces together for me in such a way that just was simple but powerful. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is God's truth right here. It wasn't always what I, what I wanted to hear, but I knew it was the truth, and I always wanted the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I've been teaching from Romans chapter 1 about the four things that you can do to stay full of God. Now, that's the title of this book, and I've said this every day this week, but this is one of the most important things that God has ever shown me. I tell you, this is powerful. It has just transformed my life, and yet this is not one of our uh, biggest requested TEACHINGS. I THINK IT MAY BE THE TITLE. YOU KNOW, I'M ANOINTED TO TEACH THE WORD OF GOD, BUT I DON'T HAVE A SPECIAL ANOINTING FOR TITLES. SO ANYWAY, BECAUSE OF THAT, I'M GIVING THIS BOOK AWAY. IT'S A 200-PLUS PAGE BOOK, AND I'M JUST MAKING THIS AVAILABLE TO YOU. WE ASK PEOPLE TO GIVE IF YOU CAN. Uh, WE DON'T HAVE AN UNLIMITED RESOURCES AND STUFF, BUT I AM SO CONVINCED THAT THIS WOULD BLESS YOU IF YOU COULD GET HOLD OF THIS THAT I'LL JUST GIVE THIS TO YOU, WHETHER YOU SEND ANYTHING OR NOT. OUR ANNOUNCER WILL GIVE YOU ALL THAT INFORMATION AT THE END OF THE PROGRAM TODAY. NOW, I'VE BEEN TEACHING FROM ROMANS CHAPTER 1, AND IN VERSE 21, THERE ARE FOUR THINGS LISTED THAT IN ORDER FOR A PERSON TO WALK AWAY FROM THE CONVICTION OF GOD, AND YOU COULD SAY NOT ONLY CONVICTION ABOUT SIN, ABOUT YOUR NEED FOR GOD, BUT YOU COULD SAY FOR YOU TO WALK AWAY FROM THE BLESSING OF GOD, THE JOY OF GOD, THE PEACE OF GOD, THE HEALING OF GOD, THE DELIVERANCE OF GOD, prosper, ANYTHING THAT GOD IS DOING IN YOUR LIFE, FOR YOU TO HAVE THOSE THINGS BEGIN TO DIMINISH IN YOUR LIFE AND LOSE THEIR IMPACT ON YOU, YOU HAVE TO DO FOUR THINGS LISTED IN ROMANS 1, 21. IT SAYS, BECAUSE THAT WHEN THEY KNEW GOD, THE FIRST THING IS THEY GLORIFIED HIM NOT AS GOD. THE SECOND THING IS THEY WEREN'T THANKFUL. THE THIRD THING, THEY BECAME VAIN IN THEIR IMAGINATIONS. AND THE FOURTH THING WAS THEIR FOOLISH HEART WAS DARKENED. AND SO I'M GOING TO BE GOING THROUGH ALL FOUR OF THESE THINGS. YESTERDAY, I STARTED EXPLAINING THAT THE VERY FIRST THING, AND I BELIEVE THESE ARE PROGRESSIVE THINGS THAT YOU HAVE TO DO, THE FIRST LINE OF DEFENSE AGAINST SATAN COMING AND STEALING SOME BLESSING FROM YOU THAT GOD HAS GIVEN YOU, HE'S GOT TO GET YOU TO START DEVALUING WHAT GOD HAS DONE IN YOUR LIFE. THAT'S WHAT THE WORD GLORIFY MEANS. IT MEANS TO RENDER OUR ESTEEM GLORIOUS. AND THE WORD ESTEEM MEANS TO VALUE our prize. Whether you realize it or not, you place a value on everything and every person, everything that goes on in your life. You aren't conscious of this, but you have, you place a value on things. You know, let me just use this example that say, for instance, you're having trouble with your mate and your mate is criticizing you and saying things that are, dist you know, disturbing you and taking your joy and your peace away. I COULD HAVE YOUR MATE COME SAY TO ME THE EXACT SAME WORDS THAT THEY SAY TO YOU, AND IT WOULDN'T AFFECT ME THE WAY IT AFFECTS YOU. AND SOME OF YOU ARE THINKING, WELL, OF COURSE NOT. IT'S NOT YOUR MATE. HERE'S ANOTHER WAY OF SAYING THAT. I DON'T VALUE THEIR OPINION THE WAY THAT YOU DO. I AM NOT CODEPENDENT UPON THEIR APPROVAL THE WAY THAT YOU ARE. NOW, I'M NOT TELLING YOU THAT YOU SHOULDN'T LOVE YOUR MATE AND THAT YOU SHOULDN'T SEEK TO HAVE UNITY. THERE'S GREAT BLESSING IN HAVING UNITY IN YOUR LIFE, BUT I AM SAYING THAT IF YOU'RE IN ONE OF THOSE SITUATIONS WHERE SOMEBODY IS DISAGREEING WITH YOU AND THEIR REJECTION OF YOU IS HURTING YOU, THE REASON THAT IS HAPPENING IS BECAUSE OF THE VALUE THAT YOU PLACED ON THEIR ACCEPTANCE OR APPROVAL. ANOTHER WAY OF SAYING THIS IS THE ONLY PEOPLE WHO WILL EVER LET YOU DOWN ARE THE ONES THAT YOU LEAN ON. IF YOU NEVER LEAN UPON ANOTHER PERSON, IF YOU DON'T HAVE TO HAVE THEIR APPROVAL, IF THE ONLY PERSON THAT YOU VALUE IN PRIZE IS GOD, I USE THIS EXAMPLE OF LIKE A SEESAW. YOU HAVE A FULCRUM IN THE MIDDLE, AND YOU CAN'T HAVE BOTH ENDS UP AT THE SAME TIME. IF ONE END IS UP, THE OTHER ONE IS DOWN, AND VICE VERSA. AND IF YOU PUT GOD UP HERE, AND IF YOU JUST VALUE GOD, AND PUT WORTH AND VALUE AND APPROVAL UPON GOD, AND HE'S THE ONLY ONE THAT YOU HAVE TO HAVE HIS APPROVAL, WELL, THEN RELATIVE TO THAT, IT WOULDN'T MATTER IF IT WAS YOUR MATE, IF IT WAS YOUR BOSS, IF IT WAS ANYBODY ELSE. THEY JUST ARE WAY DOWN HERE. 
But if you begin to start valuing them, and if you have to have their approval, that automatically disesteems, devalues God in your life. At the end of my program yesterday, I mentioned this very briefly, but let me give a further explanation that I had a man come to me, and he works in the medical field, and I'm not sure exactly what his position was, but he worked at a hospital, and he came to me, and he says, they're going to fire me if I don't get a vaccination. And I said, do you want to get a vaccination? And he said, no, absolutely not. I believe God told me not to take the vaccination. Now, we can discuss the vaccination. That's a separate issue. I personally believe that these vaccinations are hurting a lot of people. If you think that God wants you to take the vaccine, that's a whole nother issue. But this man said that he felt like God told him not to take the vaccine. And I said, well, if he told you not to do it, then don't do it. And he says, but they're going to fire me. You know what it comes down to? Again, it's this thing about where do you put your value? What is valuable to you? Do you value God's Word to you more than you value your job? Or if you value your job, they're going to fire me. And so therefore, God told me not to do it, but I'm going to have to disesteem, devalue what God says, because I've got to keep this job. Now, there's a lot of people watching this to think, well, what other options do I have? Keep, do what God told you to do. Well, but they're going to fire me. Let them fire you. <laughs> you know, if, if the way you interpret God's will for your life is based on the potential consequences, then I guarantee you're never going to get anything done. It just doesn't work that way. You've got to get to a place to where you value God. And if God tells you to do something and it turns out being to your detriment, it doesn't matter. You value God more than anything else. You know, this literally happened with me. I've mentioned this week about that experience I had March the 23rd, 1968, and God poured His love out in my life. And the very first thing that He told me was to quit school. That's a long story. I'll probably deal with that towards the end of this teaching and give you more explanation on it. But God told me to quit school. This was at the height of the Vietnam War. And I stood to lose my student deferment and get drafted if I quit school. I also was receiving $350 a month from the government, from my dad's Social Security if I stayed in school, they paid me $350 a month. I don't know what that would be worth today, but probably $1,500 or $2,000 a month. And I was just going to lose it if I quit school. Plus, I was accepted by people. In my family, education was it. My father, my mother, my brother, my sister, my in-laws, my outlaws, everybody was a school teacher, and education was just it. And for me to quit school was not popular. I actually had people try and kick me out of the church. They were actually going to take a vote and potentially kick me out of the church because I said that God told me to quit school. I know some of you think I'm making these things up, but I mean, we went to a highbrow Baptist church. When the pastor was gone, they would have those seminary professors from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary come fill, fill the pulpit. And I mean, for you to follow the message, you had to have a dictionary in front of you to look up all of these, you know, highfalutin words and stuff that they were using. I mean, education was a big thing. So I was going to be rejected on the basis of uh, I was breaking tradition with everybody else. I was losing money. I was potentially going to be drafted and sent to Vietnam. It was going to cost me a lot. And there's a lot of people that the, when the Lord speaks something to them, they look at what the potential results are going to be, and they make their decision based on those things. You know what you're doing? You're valuing your position, your job, your acceptance with people, your money. Money is more important to you than what God has to say, that uh, your life is more important to you than what God has to say. And the moment you do that, the moment you value these other things, you devalue God. You quit glorifying God. And that is a recipe 
for losing the blessing in what God has done in your life. But see, if you can do the other way, and if you can just keep glorifying God and putting value on what God has said, again, it's like that seesaw. Both sides can't be up at the same time. If you glorify God and refuse to ever quit glorifying Him, you are going to take what God told you, and you are going to put worth and value on that. If it hair lips the devil, you aren't going to change. You know, right after I made this decision, my mother, uh, I mean, my mother and I were super close. My dad died when I was 12 years old. My sister was already married. My brother uh, was off the rails and giving my mother trouble. And as a result, um, man, my mother and I were very, very close. And when I made this decision to quit school, she just didn't understand it. She loved me. I'm not criticizing her, but I'm saying she didn't understand it. God didn't speak to her. He spoke to me. And she didn't talk to me for two weeks. And so I determined I was going to get my mother to talk to me. So I took her out to a steak place. I bought her a meal. And I said, talk to me. Say something. And you know, the first words that she said to me after two weeks was, I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed of you and what you're doing. And you know what? That had a tendency right then for me. I love my mother and I wanted to please her and that, that I could have put value on what she said and started devaluing God and saying, if this is what this leads to, well, then I'm not going to go that way. But by the grace of God, I told my mother, I said, I, I love you. And I said, I don't understand exactly everything that God's telling me to do, but I have made a decision that I'm quitting school because that's what God told me to do. And I said, if it does make me lose this money, if it does make me go to Vietnam, I don't care what the results of it are. I am going to stick with what God told me. And I just kept valuing God. I love my mother and I was sorry that she was disappointed and ashamed of me. And did you know that she... Uh, took me on a trip right after I graduated from uh, high school and stuff. She took me on a trip. Well, it was right after this experience. It was after my first year of college. She took me on a trip to Bern, Switzerland to go to a Billy Graham conference. It was a Christian group, and there was about 45 people in the thing. And we went with a Baptist pastor, and she told this Baptist pastor what had happened and that I had lost my mind and she sicked this Baptist pastor on me to try and get me talked out of what I was doing. And for about three months, well, three weeks during that trip, he just hounded me and told me that everything I was doing was wrong and stuff. But here's my point. On the very first night of that trip, I was in New York City. And man, I was a hick from Texas. And I had never seen the things that I was seeing on Times Square. We were staying in a hotel that was on Times Square. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, I was out walking around, and I was passing out tracks. And you know what? I walked down alleys where there were gangs. I didn't know what. They didn't have gangs in Arlington, Texas. And I walked down these alleys and see gangs and these people dressed in all this black stuff. And... I didn't even know enough to get in trouble. I just would walk around and give them all a track and go to preaching to them. And man, they just scatter like roaches when the light comes on. And I was out uh, doing things. And, and anyway, my mother was in the hotel room just petrified, worried about me. What's going to happen? Is he going to get killed? Is something going to happen? And she was praying and she had a dream, and she didn't tell me about this. She told my sister about it. My sister, years, a decade later, told me about it. But my mother had a dream while she was worried about me, and in this dream, I don't know all the details, but the Lord appeared to her and said, Andrew's doing what I told him to do. Take your hands off of him. And from that moment on, my mother became my biggest cheerleader, and she moved to Colorado with me. She worked for me for nearly 20 years. And I mean, we just were super close and God put it together. I didn't have to sit there and take, con you know, authority over everything. We're sometimes so worried about what is a, you know, God told me to do this, but if I do it, what's going to happen over here? If you get to thinking that way and start valuing these other relationships and valuing things, you automatically quit glorifying God. You quit valuing God and that is Satan's first penetration. It will start diminishing the joy 
AND THE VALUE OF WHAT GOD HAS DONE IN YOUR LIFE. BECAUSE I STOOD AGAINST THE RELIGIOUS PEOPLE IN MY CHURCH, BECAUSE I STOOD AGAINST EVEN RELATIVES WHO DIDN'T UNDERSTAND WHAT I HAD TO SAY, AND I JUST KEPT VALUING GOD, I GUARANTEE YOU I HAVE NEVER LOST THE JOY AND THE BENEFIT OF WHAT GOD HAS DONE. AND YOU KNOW, NOT LONG AFTER THAT, NOT LONG AFTER I QUIT SCHOOL, THEY SENT ME FOR A PHYSICAL, A PRE-INDUCTION PHYSICAL, AND uh, FOR THE ARMY. AND I WENT OVER AND PASSED THIS PHYSICAL. AND SO A RECRUITER CAME TO MY HOUSE. I WAS THERE BY MYSELF. MY MOTHER WAS A TEACHER. SHE WAS TEACHING SCHOOL. AND I WAS THERE DURING THE DAY BY MYSELF, AND A RECRUITER CAME TO THE HOUSE, AND HE KNOCKED ON THE DOOR, CAME IN, and SAT AT OUR DINING ROOM TABLE, OPENED UP HIS BRIEFCASE, PUT OUT ALL OF THESE PAMPHLETS, AND STARTED SHOWING ME ALL OF THE BENEFITS OF JOINING THE ARMY VERSUS BEING DRAFTED. AND HE SAYS, I CAN'T GUARANTEE IT, BUT YOU MIGHT BE ABLE TO GO TO KOREA OR SOME OTHER PLACE OTHER THAN VIETNAM. AND, OF COURSE, IT WAS GOING TO BE INSTEAD OF A TWO-YEAR ENLISTMENT, IF YOU GET DRAFTED, IT WAS GOING TO BE A THREE-YEAR ENLISTMENT. AND ANYWAY, HE STARTED JUST MAKING ALL OF THESE POINTS. AND I JUST TOLD HIM, I SAID, I CAN SAVE YOU AND ME BOTH A LOT OF TIME. AND HE SAYS, HOW'S THAT? AND I SAID, THE REASON I GOT LISTED AS 1A AND THEN I WAS SENT FOR A PRE-INDUCTION PHYSICAL IS BECAUSE I QUIT SCHOOL. AND HE SAID, THAT'S RIGHT. AND I SAID, BUT SEE, GOD TOLD ME TO QUIT SCHOOL. <laughs> AND WHEN I SAID THAT, I COULD JUST SEE THIS SMIRK COME ON HIS FACE. AND I WENT ON TO SAY, AND I SAID, SO IF GOD WANTS ME DRAFTED, I'LL BE DRAFTED, AND IF HE DOESN'T, I WON'T. I SAID, I'M JUST DOING WHAT... SEE, WHAT I WAS DOING, I DIDN'T SAY IN THESE WORDS, BUT I'M GLORIFYING GOD. I'M VALUING GOD. GOD SPOKE TO ME, AND I DON'T CARE WHAT THE RESULTS ARE. I DON'T CARE IF IT SENDS ME TO VIETNAM. I DON'T CARE IF I GET SHOT AT. I DON'T CARE IF I GET KILLED. I WOULD RATHER DO WHAT GOD SAYS THAN ANYTHING ELSE. AND WHEN I SAID THAT, THIS RECRUITER JUST BROKE OUT LAUGHING. AND HE SAYS, BOY, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, YOU ARE GOING TO VIETNAM. AND WHEN HE SAID THAT, YOU KNOW WHAT IT WAS? HERE I WAS VALUING GOD. HE DIDN'T VALUE GOD AT ALL. TO HIM, GOD WAS WAY DOWN HERE, AND HE WAS REPRESENTING THE U.S. GOVERNMENT. HE DIDN'T PLACE ANY WORTH, ANY VALUE ON GOD AT ALL. AND IT MADE ME MAD. THIS WAS SATAN TRYING TO GET ME TO DEVALUE WHAT GOD HAD TOLD ME TO DO. AND IT MADE ME MAD THAT SOMEBODY ELSE DIDN'T PUT, put THE SAME VALUE ON GOD SPEAKING TO ME THAT I DID. AND SO HERE I WAS, BY THAT TIME, I THINK I HAD TURNED 19 YEARS OLD, AND HERE THIS GUY WAS, PROBABLY 30-SOMETHING YEARS OLD, A REPRESENTATIVE OF THE UNITED STATES GOVERNMENT. HE WAS AUTHORITY, AND I WAS NOBODY. BUT, MAN, I HAD A WORD FROM GOD. I WAS VALUING AND PRIZING THAT, AND IT MADE ME MAD. I PUT MY FINGER IN THIS GUY'S CHEST. I WAS POKING HIM LIKE THIS, AND I SAID, BUDDY, GOD SPOKE TO ME AND TOLD ME TO QUIT SCHOOL. I'M DOING WHAT GOD TOLD ME TO DO, AND I SAID, IF GOD DOESN'T WANT ME DRAFTED, I SAID, YOU ARE THE UNITED STATES GOVERNMENT OR EVERY DEMON IN HELL CAN'T DRAFT ME. <laughs> YOU KNOW WHAT I WAS DOING? I WAS KEEPING GLORIFYING GOD. I WAS VALUING THAT WORD THAT I HAD FROM GOD. AND HERE WAS A REPRESENTATIVE OF THE UNITED STATES GOVERNMENT, BUT I WASN'T GOING TO VALUE HIM. TO DO THAT, I WOULD HAVE HAD TO have DEVALUED GOD. AND THIS GUY, HE NEVER SAID A WORD. HE JUST gra GATHERED UP ALL OF HIS STUFF, PUT IT IN HIS BRIEFCASE, AND WALKED OUT AND NEVER SAID A WORD. AND DID YOU KNOW THE VERY NEXT DAY, I HAD MY DRAFT NOTICE IN MY MAILBOX. AND I DIDN'T THINK ABOUT IT THEN, BUT I WISHED I'D HAVE LOOKED TO SEE IF IT HAD A POSTMARK ON IT. I THINK THAT THIS GUY PROBABLY WENT DOWN AND PROCESSED MY STUFF PERSONALLY AND DRAFTED ME AND PUT THE DRAFT NOTICE IN MY MAILBOX. I DON'T KNOW FOR SURE, BUT IT DOESN'T MATTER BECAUSE WHAT I WAS SAYING WAS TRUE. I VALUED GOD, AND I DIDN'T VALUE A RECRUITER, A PERSON WHO WAS REPRESENTING THE UNITED STATES GOVERNMENT. TO ME, GOD'S WORD IS MORE VALUABLE THAN ANYTHING THAT THE DEVIL COULD THROW AT ME. AND IF IT WOULD HAVE COST ME MY LIFE IN VIETNAM, I WAS IN SOME PLACES WHERE I SHOULD HAVE DIED. I WAS ACTUALLY, I WAS A CHAPLAIN'S ASSISTANT, AND I WAS DRIVING THE CHAPLAIN ONE TIME, AND WE WERE STOPPED AT A LIGHT BACK IN THE REAR AREA. I WAS DRIVING A, a LITTLE OPEN uh, JEEP, AND WE WERE PARKED BEHIND A WATER TRUCK, AND A DEUCE AND A HALF CAME AROUND THE CORNER TOO FAST, AND HE LOST CONTROL, GOT UP ON TWO WHEELS, AND HE WAS COMING STRAIGHT FOR US. AND WE WERE PARKED IN BETWEEN THIS uh, 
water truck and a car that was behind us. There was nowhere to go. There was no way to escape. And I mean, at the last moment, this thing hit a chug hole and it uh, knocked it into the water truck and the chaplain and I were totally doused in water, but we weren't hurt at all. I had, uh, man, I could just tell you, there were so many times that I should have died and yet God just took care of me and I wasn't afraid because I was valuing God's Word. For you to fear what you're doing is valuing these other things. You're valuing your life more than you value God. You know, the Apostle Paul in Roman, uh, Philippians chapter 1, he said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. To die is even better. He says, I'm in a strait between two. I'd rather go be with the Lord, but it's more necessary for you that I stay here. You can get to a place to where you value God. You value your life in God. You value eternity more than you value your job, more than you value these financial things, more than you value the acceptance of other people. This is how I live my life. I place value on what God says more than anybody or anything else. And I know that there's some people that would criticize me for that. Well, you're supposed to value all these other things. I don't. And because of it, I'm in my 54th year since the Lord touched my life. And I tell you, it has just, it has transformed me. It's changed everything in my life. And brothers and sisters, I'm telling you on the authority of God's Word that this will work for you too. If you've ever received anything from the Lord, you put value on that and relative to what you place on God, everything else, let every man, everything be a liar. You value what God's Word says. And it's something that you have to do consciously. It can't be done accidentally. But I promise you, if you would follow through with these steps that we're talking about, I promise you it would keep the things that God has done in your life fresh. It would keep the love of God, your awareness of the presence of God, your joy, your peace, your finances, all of the blessings, all of these things, they'd be fresh in your life. It's not God who determines whether or not you're full of Him or not. He lives on the inside of you in His fullness, but it's your focus and what you value that determines what is going to dominate your emotions and your experience. I tell you, if you can understand the things I've talked about today, this would answer a lot of questions for people. Again, I want to encourage you to please get this book. I'm having to break this teaching up into little 30-minute segments. This book would make an impact on you. I believe it would make a huge difference in your life. You need to get this. You need to be able to study it, and you also need to get this so you can give it to somebody else. We're making it available to you as a gift. We encourage you to give. We need people to give. If you can, I encourage you to do it. But I want you to have this so much, I'll give it to you as a free gift. You can also go to our website and you can get free downloads of my CDs or DVDs teaching on this. And we also have a study guide that is specifically made so that you can disciple other people in this same teaching. So listen to our announcer as he gives you the information about how to receive these products. And please call or write today. You say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going by what I see. I go by what the Word of God says. There's more than just this physical realm. There's also a spiritual realm. I don't care what this looks like. I know what God's Word says. I was told that I would always have severe asthma and food allergies. I was born missing the left side of my heart with a very small chance of living. The doctors indicated that I had a permanent brain injury and that I would never function in mainstream society again. I'm Tim McDermott. And my brother and I were told that we would never recover from autism. From a young age, I had several diagnoses, including Asperger's syndrome, disexecutive syndrome, and communication disorders. My brother James was diagnosed with autism before he turned three. For years, it seemed like we would never be normal. But then my parents stumbled across the healing journey of Hannah Terides. A few weeks later, we went to Andrew's free Grace and Faith conference, where we were healed of autism. Today, 10 years later, I'm still walking in my complete healing, and I am not alone. I haven't needed my inhaler in years, and now I eat whatever I want. My heart grew back its missing piece, and the doctors cannot explain it. Today, I'm completely healed, and I get to teach God's truth about healing. Because people like you partnered with Andrew O'Mac Ministries, we have all been given our lives back. We cannot thank you enough for your generosity. 
but there are still millions of lives out there looking for the same truth that set us free. Will you help us bring this message to them? The word needs to get out to change people's lives. Please consider a partnership. Please partner with this ministry, it's amazing. Please consider being a partner with this ministry. You know, you may not know these people, but I know every one of these people that you just saw them give a testimony. And I tell you, Jesus changed their life because of our partners. If you've not yet joined with us and become a partner, I ask you to pray about it and join with us today. I want to let you know that we have now started a Karis Daily Live Bible Study. We've been doing a Bible study every Tuesday night live for about two years, but now we have five days a week. We've varied the times so that we can accommodate anybody's schedule, and it's going to really be good. We're going to use our instructors from the school, and it'll be a blessing. So remember, we now have a Karis Daily Live Bible Study five days a week. Learn the essentials to having a strong relationship with God when you get Andrew's teaching, Discover the Keys to Staying Full of God. Today, Andrew is offering his book as a gift to you absolutely free. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive this free offer. Andrew's entire series is available in a book, study guide, or as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Andrew is offering these products as part of the Discover the Keys package. This package includes the book, study guide, and your choice of either a CD or DVD album. The Discover the Keys package has a catalog value of $80, but it can be yours today for only $60. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. I want to let all of our English-speaking audience know that we are beginning broadcast in Spanish, and I believe that this is going to be a deal changer for many people. We've had a huge response to the English program, and this is our first time to really be broadcasting in Spanish like this, and we need people to help us. If you would like to help us establish this ministry to the Spanish-speaking world, I encourage you to go to our website. There will be information on the screen. Join with us and help us start the Spanish-speaking broadcast of the Gospel Truth program.